Hi there, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts and today I really want to teach you how to do a swatch of the double crochet V stitch so that you can complete any of our blankets that we have on our website using this stitch. It is so beginner friendly and I love to introduce this blanket actually more like as the second blanket I teach my kids to make. After they've mastered double crochet, this is a really fun one to um, to learn how to do. So what you will need is, well for today, I mean you can use any yarn and then look on the side of the package, you know, for the yarn size, but today I am using Karen Simply Soft and I have an H hook. So usually you look on the side of the package and it will tell you H-8 five millimeter and that's the size of hook. This is a Susan Bates Comfort Grip. I tend to like using these when I use Karen Simply Soft. Um, I don't know, it just seems to work better for me. So I'm going to start with white and hopefully you'll be able to see. And you want to just put, for this swatch, 20 chains on, on you know, work 20 chains. When you do the blanket or if you want to actually just freestyle and do your own blanket, any even number will work for a base chain. So I'm going to get 20 chains on my hook here worked and um, that'll give us a nice little swatch to work with. Okay, I can't count and talk at the same time. Here we go, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I did 22. Okay, I just want 20 really. Okay, so what you're going to do is count to the fourth chain from the hook. Now that's never counting this one that's around the hook. It's starting with this one. One, two, three, four. Right there in that fourth chain, I want you to yarn over insert your hook and work a double crochet, which means you yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, and yarn over and pull through two more. Now in that very same chain space, we're going to work one more double crochet. Yarning over, inserting my hook, yarning over, pulling up a loop, yarning over, pulling through two loops, yarning over, pulling through two more loops. Okay, so now look at your chain. Kind of hold it flat so you can see your, your chains. Skip the next one and work into the next one. And we will work two double crochets again. We're starting that little base row of V's. That's why they call it the double crochet V stitch. Okay, so I just worked two. Now you're gonna skip again and work into the next one. We're gonna work those two double crochets. There's no chaining in between in this pattern. I have seen other people do that, but we tend to like this one because I like to keep the stitches a little bit close together. Um, plus it gives this blanket really nice texture. Okay, I'm skipping a chain and just working into the next one. I'm going all the way down the row. Skipping again, working into the next one, working those two double crochets. I'm gonna do another one slow, just in case you're a beginner and you're like, wait, you're moving too fast. Skipping, yarning over, inserting my hook, yarning over, pulling up a loop, yarning over, pulling through two, yarning over and pulling through two more. I hope actually that, um, you know, if you're a true beginner, go, I do have an all double crochet beginner blanket that is so great to practice. Yarn, changing your colors, all sorts of things. Okay, I'm right here to the end and Oh, it will turn out that you skip one and instead of working two into this very last one, we're just going to work one. And that's it. Okay. That's your first row. 
Now we're going to chain three up and turn your work like a page in the book. And when you see in patterns, when it says the chain threes count as the first stitch, what that means is that you do not work into that very next space right there. It means that those chains are standing right on top of this first stitch and you do not need to work right down here. You will be working into the, what we're gonna do is work in between the little Vs, the pair of, v, of Vs. So I'm gonna yarn over and insert my hook into that hole between the two posts of the double crochet that are worked into one stitch. And I'm gonna work two of them. So it kind of splits these Vs apart. So now I'm going to not work into this space. That would be the space between the pairs of Vs. We are going to work in between the pair of Vs. I know it's tricky. Just I want to make sure that you're working in between the pair of Vs that were worked into the same stitch in the row below. I've seen um, people kind of misunderstand what that means when, when we say in the pattern, work in between the pair of Vs, not pairs of Vs that are you know next to each other. Just want to make sure that is clear. And you're going to continue on down the row. We're going to work two of them, kind of split those apart. You'll see how we just kind of create these little Vs. And at the end of this row, I'll show you how to change yarn colors. It's very standard in crochet how to change yarn colors. You hear the little doggies barking in the background here on the farm. <laughs> okay. I'm at my last one. Okay, remember how we started this round? And we had those, you know, we skipped over and started in the first fourth chain from the hook. Well, those three chains we we skipped are essentially as if it was the turning chains. So we will work one, one double crochet into the top of those turning chains. Find any space you can. And that is will be our last stitch. And you'll always notice in this pattern, it always ends with just one double crochet. Oh, and I told you I was going to teach you how to change yarn. So just a second, I'm going to undo that. Okay, so right here, we're going to work into that last stitch, work just through the first two loops and stop right there. What you're going to do is grab your second color and you simply lay the yarn over the hook and pull it through. Always changing color on the last step of a stitch. And that's pretty standard in crochet. Now we will chain three, just like we did before, and turn like a page in the book. This chain three counts as the first stitch, so you will not be working into this space. Do not work into there where you see that last. Work down underneath here between the two V's, the two double crochets that made that little V. There you go. We will work too. You have got the pattern. That's it. So you have got it and you are well on your way. After I finish this row, I am going to um, show any beginner how to weave in the ends. Uh, so, but basically, if you've got it, you are free to go. Thank you for stopping by Daisy Farm Crafts. And if you need we are going to put the link to the um, modern double crochet v-stitch blanket uh, in the descriptions so i know there's a tiny little arrow if you're on your phone in the app that you can barely see but if you tap that this little triangle then all the information that we have loaded on like how you can access the pattern and um, the links that take you straight to daisyfarmcrafts.com. It'll take you straight to the modern 
V-stitch blanket and um, you're well on your way. Okay, here's that turning chain. We're gonna work right into the top of it with our last double crochet. And I will say that is tricky. So if you are a beginner and you are struggling trying to find the top of that stitch, can I just tell you to just go into the big hole and just do that as it really, if you go back and do a border, yes, you'll have a tiny bit of a hole, but this is kind of a whole holy looking blanket pattern anyway, so I don't think you'll be sad about it. I'd much rather you go ahead and hit that stitch rather than struggle and struggle and get frustrated to try and find the top of that turning chain because it can get really tight on you really quickly. Okay, I'm chaining three and I would turn. Okay, so say you finished your whole blanket and you it's time to weave in the ends. Hold on. Okay, I'll be right back. I've got to find my tapestry needle. Okay, I got it. And I want to show you what a tapestry needle is, or what I call a tapestry needle. It has a large eye, it has a blunt end, it's easy to thread yarn through, and it won't, um, you know, cut through your yarn too much. I use this to sew in the ends. And so generally, when you see in a pattern that it says to tie off, what that means is on your very last stitch, say this was the end of our blanket, you want to give yourself a long tail, pull that right out and you are going to want to clip it and then just pull that out and that's basically tying off it's just that you know you'll no longer be able to crochet with that so then I thread my needle and I go ahead and you're gonna want to weave your needle in and out and around any stitch that you want to obviously that's the same color and try to disguise the um, the tail and it doesn't matter how you do it what stitches the point is is that you want to disguise it and you want to weave in and out several times that way your ends become secure and um, I find that it's a lot better than crocheting over the ends in a, you know, in a straight fashion. I've seen blankets that I've made in the past where I use that technique and after it gets some use, those you'll, you see your ends kind of popping out. So I feel much better just taking the time to weave in and out, in and out. So then when I'm finished, I'll kind of find an area where I can go at least under three or four. And it's, it is tricky in this V-stitch blanket. Let's give you that. Kind of maybe run your needle across these stitches the best, best you can and get them laid out. And then you're gonna wanna clip your ends as close to the fabric as possible. And they'll just kind of be hidden away. Just like that. And then I just go and I do all the other ends. So hopefully that gives you just a great little tutorial for the double crochet V-stitch that we use for our modern double crochet V-stitch blankets. I know we have probably three or four patterns of them on our website made with different yarn, mostly Karen Simply Soft. I think I made one with Bernat Softy Baby Blanket, Baby Blanket and that turned out really cute too. Okay, thank you everybody for stopping by. We so love to share your work. So if you are on Instagram and want to hashtag any blanket you've made, hashtag Daisy Farm Crafts, we love sharing them up in our stories. So, okay, have a good day. Talk to you soon.